RPG PTI from here on out, if you please. Um, I'm going to go through the introduction. So I'm Jackson. Spencer. Brandon. Nathan. And we were selected to work for uh, UGPTI. And what they are is an education research uh, outreach center based at, uh, at NDSU. And what they focus on is uh, the costs involved in transportation infrastructure and looking into uh, some research on that. Uh, they're guided by a lot of local agencies around the area. Uh, Alan Dibbing, uh, our, our project uh, advisor, who we thought would be here but couldn't make it. Um, he's been a really good resource for the project. Uh, he's been working at UGPTI for about 10 years now. So he's very knowledgeable on the subject and we've been able to ask him a lot of questions and he gives good feedback right away. So it's helped guide the project immensely. So the problem we have here is they gave us this old application. And what it did is it has a whole bunch of inputs here as you can see. And you'd go through, you'd fill all of this out and at the end you'd calculate it. And it would show you how much it would cost for you to take over your own shipping. Um, there were a lot of problems with this though. For example, it's become so outdated that a lot of users, when they try to run it, it simply wouldn't even work, which is obviously a pretty big problem. The UI is also exceptionally outdated. It has that you know, early 2000s look where they have all of these tabs up across the top. Um, things have shifted more nowadays so that um, you rework this UI flow that they used to have and make it a little bit more linear. So it's a step-by-step -step process instead of just throwing the user in and having them try to figure out where to go by themselves. A couple of other problems this uh, application has is you can see this GVW is outlined in red here. The problem with that is this looks exactly the same as a user input, like payload right up above there, but it's not. It's an output, and that ends up being pretty confusing for users. It's not very clear communication, so we wanted to fix that. And we also wanted to move the logo up to the top left. So. All right, I'm going to be talking about the scheduling we went through and the progress that we've made um, throughout the year. So talking about the schedule at the start, um, we pretty much just follow a, a standard uh, four sprint over the course of three to four months schedule, with the first sprint being pretty much project initiation, um, documentation, planning, the second sprint being making a lot of, um, a lot of uh, diagrams and documentation and starting a little bit on the coding and three and four being the main uh, source of all of our coding and implementation. Um, and then now we're at the presentation at the end, so as you can see there. Um, so when we first decided to break up the tasks we had to do, we decided to do it in a, this user story model. And as you can see, we have um, all of the um, things that we uh, did in our project. We did like computing the data, um, entering all your information, um, viewing your summaries, doing the calculations, um, features like importing um, inputs and saving inputs and printing and a lot of other things like that. And you can see they've got these uh, story points value associated with them, pretty much the amount of work that uh, would go into them. And after we went through it all, we, um, we documented our actual story points, pretty much meaning how much um, work they actually took compared to what we thought. And as you can see, um, computing the data ended up taking about um, eight more story points than we anticipated, which is you know about 80 percent or so. So that's a pretty pretty sizable increase. Um, what else? Uh, the data about entering data about the cost was just a little bit more difficult. Um, importing saved inputs was a lot more difficult. We had it rated at around a two, which is very low, and it ended up being about half of uh, computing the data. So. Um, as you can see as well, sensitivity options were much more difficult in the same vein, and we kind of overestimated the work on um, some of the advanced settings as well. So as you can see, we kind of underestimated a lot of our work, but ended up getting most of it done. So talking about our, uh, some of the stuff we completed is we decided to um, kind of reinvent the project with this uh, linear flow um, linear flow model instead of a free-flowing model. And what that kind of means is that um, you have multiple pages um, that you go from start to end, not um, in between, not like just choosing an arbitrary one to go to. So you have the trip and, and then the uh, cost and then your truck. And these are all of your inputs um, for what you need to, uh, what, you, what you're looking to input. And then after that comes the um, cost summary output page. So 
kind of the reason that we decided to do this is because we think it's a lot more intuitive for a user, and it also gives you kind of a, a sense of a place in the project. You don't get you can't get lost at all. Um, we decided to come up with some diagrams that kind of just detail um, how the user uses it. As you can see, the um, end user looking at you know it's kind of just following that um, that um, kind of pathway that I described. It's not really important to go over. Um, some other um, diagrams we came up with for kind of assessing the calculations. Um, so total, what we've pretty much got done is we've got these uh, all of our calculations implemented. There's over 100 calculations in the um, in in the whole project. Um, stuff like calculating everything per trip, per ton, per hour, per mile. The totals um, for fixed costs and variable costs, and we'll show you what that all means in the context of the project. Um, we went through a lot of uh, formatting, um, stuff like changing the amount of, changing your uh, precision, your decimal places, being able to increase and decrease that, um, stuff like um, comma separators, just for more you know readability, um, and we implemented this uh, thing called sensitivity comparison. And what that is pretty much is you're able to do your calculations, and then you're going to um, have a nice um, page that where you can. Um, propose changes um, to your inputs and see how that affects your total cost. So it can be very useful in quickly um, checking to see if maybe my, my fuel price goes up or something. How does that affect my uh, all of my costs as a percentage? Um, and so we're going to jump into the, a, a short demo real quick. Um, pull this up. That's not the right folder. Uh, no, that's not it. Where is it? So if you'd like to discuss it, or who's going to start? I use everything. Oh, my bad. OK, my bad. Sorry. All right, so um, as you can see, we've got, yeah, <laughs> we've got this uh, very, Spencer. what's up? Oh, you can't see it. Oh, OK. We've got to do this. There you go. So we've got this uh, first page, which is the trip characteristics form. And what this is is pretty much it allows you to um, change all this information, like your origin, your destination, you know, your your tons of commodity, commodity um, loaded versus back hauling, wait time, your speed, your distance, and your um, GVW and your tear. And if you don't know what some of these things are, you, there's some nice tool tips like GVW stands for gross vehicle weight, and the tear is your uh, your empty weight vehicle. So, um, so you change all these inputs. For example, let's make this a 400 uh, distance trip, even though Fargo to Bismarck is only about 200. <laughs> Um, and this is the this is kind of the indicator of this free flowing model that or this um, this linear flow model that I described, um, where you go from characteristics to the cost, and you can see it's kind of indicated by the the blue color there. Um, and then you know we've got all these costs uh, cost inputs, which are things like you know how much you're paying your uh, drivers, your sales tax, your interest rates. We can kind of go through that pretty quickly. Um, on the truck characteristics page, you have all of your stuff for your trucks and your tractors and your trailers. Um, you can change the configuration and the type of truck that you're going to be using, um, which does affect some of the things. And you've got this annual utilization here. Um, it's an important value. Um, and that's kind of why it's uh, at the top and bolted. It's because it, uh, it's very important for uh, people who know what they're doing. Um, so as we move forward, um, we can talk about the output screen a little bit. And as you can see, we've got this uh, um, this uh, form with pretty much the bulk of what you're going to be doing here. And so I'm going to calculate this, then hand it over to um, who am I handing it over to? Okay, yeah, go ahead, Nathan. Sorry, it takes a moment because my yeah. computer's bad. As you can see, uh, kind of flashes like this as it's uh, running through every calculation. But after it's done, it will display everything all at once. So we have at the very top here. It shows the origin destination of the trip that we're planning. And then it shows under variable costs, just like the per hour or per trip kind of uh, kind of stuff. Which then also, so you can see like per mile, how much does like this specifically cost us? How much does it uh, this cost us per trip? And of course, you see it, it totals everything. Uh, and during fixed costs, uh, sometimes it's like that in, in, as an input variable, you say this is how much this is going to cost us in one year. 
So then we take that and we kind of like reverse engineer it and say, well, per mile, that means about this, because this is how many miles we are, we're eventually going to be taking across the whole thing. And then we can figure out uh, exactly how, how significant that is over the course of the whole year. It's opportunity cost, we have overhead, sales tax. Um, so all of this is kind of calculated and we can see uh, how much all this, how much like fuel consumption costs will, will cost us throughout the whole year at the very end. And then at the very bottom we have the grand total uh, and we can see like this will cost us like uh, 55, about $5,500 per year just for everything, for fuel, for labor, for everything. And then I think we can look at the sensitivity page next. I'll sure. hand it over yep. if you want to. All right, so here we've got the sensitivity page, and what this allows us to do is modify certain variables by percentage. So maybe you get done calculating all this stuff out, and you show it to your boss, and you say, look, it's going to cost us about $700 per trip. And he says, well, that's great and all, but it's coming towards the end of the year here, and our fuel prices are expected to increase by about uh, 15%. <laughs> Numlock tricked me. <laughs> you can put in that 15% calculate it, and this is how much that would change uh, with a 15% change in fuel price. Um, the same also applies, of course, for negative values. Um, and for a while we didn't uh, have actually have this new grand total chip cost, but as we were testing it we realized that's uh, where most people are going to be looking when they're interpreting uh, these values, so it's it's an important uh, thing to display for them, and it, you know you don't want to force someone to say, oh, it changes by five percent. Well, let me just go look at the per trip and calculate that myself, when we can just take care of it. And uh, we can also highlight here why annual utilization was considered an extremely valuable input. So if we actually increase our annual input here, that's actually going to decrease our total costs even further. Because there's such a big investment involved with purchasing all of the vehicles and equipment in the first place, you can actually make things cheaper for yourself by using them more. So like if you spent you know a million dollars on a truck but only went, for, for the ease of the example, you went a mile. That's a really bad investment. You just spent a million dollars to travel a mile. This helps you see exactly how much that change is going to take place with uh, annual utilization. And uh, Spencer would kill me if I didn't show you this. So you can pull up multiple sensitivity tabs as well and uh, compare side by side the changes that would be involved. So with all that being said, I'm going to hand things off to Brandon, and he's going to talk a little bit about user value importing and exporting. All right. So first off, minimize this. We have a uh, imported value all the way back here, or exported value, but I can just export again. And you see it pops up right on the desktop there. I will just go back to the beginning, and then I'll import it. So that one will give us the exact same values. This one was modified, right? Yeah, that was modified. Okay. I think. Yeah. Yep. So what this one did was just change Fargo to Fargo 2. So that's just a simple <laughs> simple modification. Uh, um, and you can actually double click on this. It just pops up as a uh, try again. <laughs> as a simple text file. And that is the basic one. Yeah. And then we'll go over to the one that we just imported. Right here, we got the Fargo 2. Uh, another cool thing that we imp implemented uh, that was wanted by Alan was a way to export all the variables into a CSV so that they could import it into Excel. And this was pretty cool because Excel just picked it up right away and it shows all of the variables already in different uh, columns along with the uh, name of the variable and the amount. Uh, let's see, just to show that, we'll hit delete, export that. Gives you a little uh, window saying that it was successfully saved to the desktop. 
should look the same. All right. And with that, I think that's about all there is for import and export. I guess you could really quick show off um, the putting some nonsense values in there. Okay, yeah. So um, the, the, the all the inputs are type safe. You shouldn't be able to crash the program by putting in Q1000 for the annual miles or something. It uh, realizes that that doesn't make any sense and it decide, it sets it to the, uh, the default. Did you add something that didn't make sense? Nope. <laughs> okay. Well, I can do that. <laughs> I thought you did and I'm like, oh, it didn't work. <laughs> During testing, putting some negative values in uh, produced interesting and amusing yeah. results in the calculations as well. Yeah, like you shouldn't be able to divide by zero. That doesn't yeah. make any sense. So, I can tell you, you make a killing if you pay negative two uh, dollars <laughs> per gallon of gas. Then so. <laughs> your annual so utilization is very important. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll import. I guess we'll have to import the. Uh, the old file to get the default value since I just changed them in there. Oh, <laughs> did I just drag something out here? Okay. Should be the top one there. Yep. There we go. File successfully imported. So now we should have the risky values in there. Yep, there we go. Annual utilization is what I changed in the uh, tires per tractor. And I'll calculate this. And we should get a. Okay, I know what I did. Yeah. I didn't calculate it after that. See what you're saying? There you go. And there are our different values. And that should be it for import and export. So I guess we can just to show gives you a notification that uh, this the, all the values the, all the uh, fields that were wrong it tells you that it's uh, not a valid input and that it resets it to its default value of uh, of eight and then it does that. So I guess we can continue on with the PowerPoint. Is that working? So would you like to take over for the uh, yep. issues and the issues we overcame? So here are some of the issues and risks we encountered. Uh, first off, the division of the responsibilities at the beginning was unclear. After we got that sorted out, everything seemed to flow fairly clear or fairly well. Uh, scheduling conflicts between different members. Some of us had classes and we couldn't meet at specific times, and it was kind of a problem. Um, web of input and output calculations was way more complex than we expected. After we got that done, it was pretty easy flowing. Uh, occasionally overriding work by mistake, that uh, caused some issues and <laughs> extended our time by quite a bit. We had some formatting issues and fixing fatal errors that caused crashes. Overall, we uh, overcame most of these, so everything works well. Right, uh, and I'll take over yeah, for uh, reflections and next steps. Uh, so here for kind of our reflection at postmortem, uh, overall, like, we successfully uh, took this old program and uh, brought it into the modern age with C Sharp. We made a new GUI design that is linear and is much more uh, intuitive for someone trying to figure out, okay, what does this all mean? Like, where, where, where would I put these inputs and what is the output so that I'm actually looking for? Uh, we did. Uh, all of our code base is pretty well documented. Like all the all of our all, all the methods that aren't just the obvious like get set methods are uh, have a quick comment of like this is what this actually does. Uh, just for people in the future who are, happen to work on it. Uh, more post post mortem stuff. The actual running of the uh, of our project uh, found out it's very important to clearly divide responsibilities and expectations for each member uh, throughout the whole year instead of just kind of letting it, okay, we have to get this done and just kind of letting it go free from there because sometimes it wasn't clear what exactly we're supposed to be doing or if we should have waited on something else. And also be very direct uh, dealing with your sponsor and just go communicate things like right away and say like, we 
uh, we'll like, need this information like by this point so we can really start working on things. And uh, next steps for anyone uh, uh, in the future who goes back to work on this and expand it. Uh, number one, add more sensitivity variables. So, some things that maybe someone who's more familiar with what exactly uh, people who use this program would actually want. Would, would, uh, like, we, have, we, have, we have field costs, but sometimes like, uh, be aware of other changes that might come up. Uh, expand the functionality of the uh, CSV exportation. Uh, just to have more outputs, just like uh, stuff like things like fixed costs instead of just uh, listing every single input that you have, that, um, just to better able to uh, keep track of that information. Obviously, improve modularity so there's uh, less hard coding of things. Put things, uh, have things like stack in, in arrays so in the future you can just add to that array a lot and it'll still work fine. You don't have to rewrite the whole program just to. Um, compensate for that one little change and have more test cases uh, for that. More data visualization, like we show how, visually show how significant each uh, expanded variable is to the overall calculations and overall totals. Uh, more uh, exporting in more formats uh, in a stable way. Uh, just, you know, we have, we export into, uh, yeah, as you can see, CSV. And we can try to export and uh, PDFs and try to export into things that we can you can copy and paste and uh, get a, a really solid uh, shot of every all the information that you got from running this program once, uh, just just to save for later. And make sure that it runs on uh, different operating systems with three level resolutions, so it doesn't uh, go, for example, down past the bottom of the page and make it impossible <laughs> to uh, continue continue to the next screen. And I think after that, it's just uh, any questions? What, was there any attempt to add new features, or was it just make sure it's exactly what it was? Um, there were a couple new features, like, uh, for example, um, just as an example of one new feature, um, all of the exporting and outporting were new. Those weren't things, but, I mean, these decimal digits, although they're not, um, like, they're not super important, um, they are a new feature, technically, um, being able to <laughs> increase the precision. Um, I don't know, anything else? Uh, I, um, the user uh, inputs, exporting them and importing them, is actually a new feature as opposed to the old model. Additionally, there is a... Uh, uh, it, there, it updated. Now we have four decimal places. <laughs> Additionally... This truck type and truck configuration yeah. for the spreadsheet model, like the values were there, the user could import them, but they weren't actually interacted with. He just had some defaults put in. So this is um, this has actually been implemented now that changing these will change the calculations slightly. Mm -hmm. um, there was something else as well. Oh yeah, the sensitivity. We didn't know. We didn't know this yeah. for sure, but Alan actually said with the old model, the sensitivity tab basically didn't yeah. work. So the whole and tab was pretty much a, a new yeah. feature. So a working sensitivity tab is the new feature. Yeah. yeah. Type saving, that's a new feature. That's a big new feature. Oh, yeah. You can't that's crash a... it by typing <laughs> the wrong things. Yeah. Go ahead. Those are good. Yeah. I guess I was thinking more like, you know, since that was done, there's a big wide tires on. Mm. Oh, so yeah. So I guess I could talk to that a little bit. Um, when the original application was made in Visual Basic uh, in like 2001 or something like that, um, there was, you know, they, they, we, we didn't just update from that. We, we made our project based on a updated uh, spreadsheet, Excel spreadsheet implementation that the UGBTI um, people put together in like, two, in like 2011 or 2012 or something. Yeah. So that it is more up to date than the old version. So yeah. go with that. Yeah. I guess, could some tweaks to the user interface be made? Uh, at first, when you kind of got to this page and it has a whole bunch of NA, yeah. I was yeah. immediately kind of wondering. Why don't I have results? And mm -hmm. it, mm. yeah, I didn't think to even look for a calculate button, or wouldn't think, why do I need to click this? You know, couldn't I just have it when calculate. I do that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that that goes ahead, or maybe even something if the calculations take that long, throw a little progress bar yeah. up just because the flickering seems <laughs> weird. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
I guess, go ahead, sorry. The, the other one, quickly, just because we're kind of running out of time, mm -hmm. we don't need to answer any of this. Okay. <laughs> I would never think to click the sensitivity button again to get another pop-up window, because <laughs> nothing works like yeah. that. Yeah. So maybe you need <laughs> so a button in that window that says, create another, another one. one of these. Yeah. Darn. So, I mean, it's a great idea. I just would never Gosh, think, think to, to do, do it. that. Yeah. All okay. right. That's good feedback. Thank you. Other questions? All right, well, thank you. Thank you.